This solution demonstrates the ability of the EMC VNX 5700 storage array to support over 50,000 input-output operations per second when running multiple TPCE-like workloads. The solution shows the benefits of introducing flash drives to the environment and enabling EMC FastVP and EMC FastCache to boost performance in an automated fashion. vSphere 5 is used to provide the virtualization layer on which a Microsoft SQL Server 2008 R2 failover cluster is configured along with a standalone VMware HA instance. Using the EMC VNX performance platform in conjunction with the software in the fast suite, Microsoft SQL Server deployments which are under performance pressure can gain a significant performance boost without the need to manually redesign storage or make changes at the application level. Both FastVP pools were created with the same attributes. The pools were easy to create and required only three user inputs pool name, disks, protection level. Both pools consisted of a disk configuration of 40 SAS drives with 5 flash drives to create a heterogeneous pool totaling 9 private RAID groups. The solution employed 12 flash drives which consisted of 6 mirrored pairs to distribute the fast cache across the buses. 6 drives were configured to use bus 0 and six drives to use bus two. This placed three mirror drive pairs across each bus. Pools were initially created as homogeneous pools with 40 SAS drives. With 40 drives for a RAID 5 pool, virtual provisioning creates eight five drive four plus one RAID groups. For baseline testing with the 40 SAS drives per pool, FastVP was disabled. Throughput was measured using the Microsoft Performance Monitor, Perfmon, counter, logical disk, average disk transfers a second. During baseline testing with 40 SAS disks in each pool, the WSFC pool produced 6,500 IOPS and the standalone produced 7,800 plus IOPS. We will now begin the process of enabling FastVP. We now show expanding a homogeneous pool to a heterogeneous pool for tiering after completing the baseline testing. Both pools were expanded with the addition of five 100 gigabyte flash drives on each. For RAID 5, initial drive allocation and expansion should be in multiples of five. Virtual provisioning creates one five drive four plus one RAID group. As these changes are applied, a warning is displayed stating that adding the additional drive types will create multiple tiers. FastVP automatically creates tier 0 as the highest tier with the flash drives as the optimal performing drives. The SAS drives which are already allocated become tier 1 which is the lowest tier. After expanding the pools with different drive types automatic data movement can now be performed on appropriate drive tiers depending on the IO activity for the data. The flash drives immediately become the pool's highest tier and the most frequently accessed data in the pool is now moved to this extreme performing tier.
securing is done at the sublon level through the use of one gigabyte segments. This ability greatly reduces provisioning uncertainty since data is moved according to the activity level and administrators are no longer locked into committing to a provisioning strategy that can quickly and unexpectedly change. Once you enable auto tiering on the LUNs, FastVP technology continuously monitors and analyzes data workloads to generate the tiering recommendations to move colder, inactive data to lower capacity optimized storage tiers and hotter, active data to higher performing tiers. Data relocation in FastVP is governed by the global relocation setting on the tiering tab of the storage pool properties window. This presents you with two options, manual or scheduled. With the manual option selected, data re relocation on the selected storage pool is initiated and you can select the rate and the duration for the data relocation to complete. Data relocation can occur in three different rates, high, medium or low. You can start, pause and stop the relocation at any stage of the process. Highest available tier sends the most critical data to the highest tier. The tiering policies are set in the LUN property windows. After relocation occurs and the hottest data is moved to the flash tier, you can see that in both Microsoft SQL instances, only LUNs 101 and 102 from Pool 1 and LUNs 201 and 202 from Pool 2 have a percentage of data moved to the flash tier, the extreme performance tier. 360GB of space on the flash tier with 324GB consumed. FastVP fills the available space on tiers to 90% when auto-tiering is the chosen tiering policy. 10% is automatically reserved by the system. After the 4-hour relocation window, LUN 202 properties were checked. As you can see, 22.16% of the LUN was moved to the flash tier in pool 1. After the introduction of the flash drives to each of the two pools and the 4-hour relocation window run, WSSC IOPS increased to 12,500 and the standalone to 16,200 plus. We will now enable Pool 1 and Pool 2 for Fast Cash. Fast Cash is enabled at the pool level with virtual provisioning. Any number of pools may utilize Fast Cash at the same time. However, the entire pool, not individual LUNs, will have Fast Cash enabled or disabled. With Fast VP enabled, virtual provisioned pools, data on those pools, flash drives, is not cached by the Fast Cash feature. It is recommended that fast cache is installed during periods of low or no activity. Creating a fast cache disables the storage system's read-write cache until the process is complete. As a result, the storage system's write cache is flushed in order to zero and then be automatically reconfigured with less memory. While the read-write cache is disabled, overall performance can be affected. The time it takes to fully configure the fast cache depends on the cache's size and any workload activity on the storage system. Larger fast cache takes longer to configure. On a quiet system with low activity and small fast caches, the configuration can take several minutes. Configuring a large fast cache on a loaded storage system may take longer than an hour. After enabling fast cache on the two pools, WSFC IOPS rows 22,000 plus and a standalone IOPS to 29,000 plus. The test showed more than a three times improvement in the ability to service I.O. from a total baseline of 14,000 IOPS to an I.O. peak of over 50,000 with Fast Suite enabled.
Throughput was also measured using the Microsoft Performance Counter databases, this transaction is a second. After enabling fast cache in the two pools, WSSC rose to 3,293 TPS and standalone to 4,484 TPS. Physical disk utilization was measured after analyzing the Unisphere NAR files, looking at physical disk utilization percentage. After enabling fast cache on the two pools, WSFC SAS disk utilization dropped to 15% and standalone SAS disk utilization dropped to 20%. The utilization of flash drives rose to 74% in WSFC pool and to 82% in a standalone pool. Storage processor utilization was measured after analyzing the Unisphere NAR files, looking at the storage processor utilization percentage. SBA was the default location owner for all the LUNs in the WSFC pool. SPB was the default allocation owner for all the LUNs in the standalone pool. After enabling fast cache on the two pools, SPA steady state disk utilization rose to 46% and SPB utilization rose to 48%. Disk latencies were monitored throughout testing. Due to the nature of the tests, initial latencies were greater than 20 millisecond for disk reads and writes, which would be the average disk read a second and average disk writes a second. Once fast VP and fast cache were enabled, latencies dropped to below 5 milliseconds for all Microsoft SQL Server data files and transaction logs. This further highlights the ability of the fast suite to optimize performance of Microsoft SQL Server in this test environment.